Hi, I'm Jerry Hesch from the Hesch Institute in Aurora, Colorado, and my client Amy flew from Orlando, Florida to see me for three days here in Aurora, Colorado, and um, she feels like her hips don't function right. She feels like she's asymmetrical in the pelvis, and when you run, it gets worse. Mm -hmm. What else makes it worse? Any kind of symmetrical, I mean, working the quads, anything that pulls or stresses the front of me or even the back of me or my hips. Yeah, so Does bending, twisting, lifting, yes. exercise at the gym. Yes. Yeah. And you've had lots of physical therapy, lots of chiropractor. Tons of chiropractors. You've had Nuka Chiropractor, yes. which, which focuses on a lateral adjustment yes. to the atlas. Yes. And you've had postural restoration institute therapy. Yep, I've had you've had custom therapy. orthotics. Yeah. I've you've had, had a custom dental splint. I have. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Um, I see some things in standing that I do not see when she lays down. Okay? And you've had a lot of people tell you your left scapula is higher and they have to work on trying to bring it down. Or you my know. right needs to go back up something. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, yeah. right, right. Um, and, and I see that when you're standing, mm -hmm. okay? But when you lay on your stomach, the scapula are even. So that's a good indication that it might be treatable, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so come over here and okay. just face me. Okay. And the camera's not going to be able to pick up this subtlety, but in standing, your pelvis uh, twists to the right. So here's an exaggeration of how that presents, mm -hmm. and that brings your femur forward. Okay, and then I can, you know, see a little elevation here. A lot of people have that, and they're totally functional. Mm -hmm. It's not always a bad sign. Okay. Okay. Now turn around, please. And again, the camera's not going to capture this subtlety. Um, but pelvis is symmetrical in terms of height, okay? And I can see, and now I think that, go ahead and turn this way, turn your whole body okay. this way. Move your whole body, the feet oh. too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just face, yeah. So in standing, you can see that elevation of this left scapula. And sometimes it's more exaggerated than other times. Sure. Like sometimes in the mirror, I will see myself All very, right. and my clothes will fit very crooked. Stripes will be crooked. Yeah. Like I'm, it gets better and worse. Got it. Got it. Okay. So lie on your back, please. Okay. Now I noticed that your right ankle, when I invert it, it goes about 25 degrees and then I try and you know force it to go further and it's solid okay and after you can come image this side and this one goes at least 30 degrees and maybe a little bit more and then I can over pressure it okay so we have some lateral ankle laxity um, perhaps a stretched um, fibulo calcaneal ligament okay but we'll try and treat that reflexively. Um, we'll see if we can change that. Okay. Now when she lies on her back, her legs are equal, okay? And her femur is no longer forward. So that's a postural adaptation, okay? And the pelvis is fairly symmetrical up and down, okay? And this is a little bit forward, so it almost does the opposite thing when you lie mm -hmm. on your back, but that's really subtle. Okay. Um, when I palpate the top of the pubic bones, your right one is considerably lower. Can you capture that with a camera? Okay. And it doesn't matter how it looks because your whole pelvis could be shifted. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then that would be a straight plane. Hmm. But in fact, what happens is when I come off the left, I fall down. Do you feel that step down? Yes. And if I try and slide, if I try and shear over to the, to the left, I hit a barrier and then I have to climb up. Okay? So this is an inferior shift of your pubic bone. Okay. All right? Now, when I try and rotate the pelvis backwards, there's no movement at all. I'm putting a lot of force through your pelvis and there's no movement. Okay? I'm trying to essentially rotate the pelvis backwards on primarily on that left side. And now I'm trying to do the same thing on the right and there's just no give. 
Okay? Now line your stomach, please. Mm -hmm. There is no upward mobility. No upward mobility. Um, now, when I spring your ribs, boom, I can take up the slack and I can spring it. It bounces forward and it bounces right back. That's the kind of movement I would expect. Same thing with your vertebrae, your thoracic vertebrae. I can, I can push it till it stops moving and then I do a little thrust with about the same amount of force and it springs and it recoils. Um, not so with your pelvis. There's no inferior glide. There's no inferior glide. There's no forward rotation. There's no spring of your sacrum, and your sacrum is very prominent mm -hmm. along the entire length. I'm on the left PSIS, this bump on the ilium, mm -hmm. and I'm on the sacrum. Can you see the difference in the thumb height? And when I try and spring your sacrum, there's no give. And when I, when I try and spring L5, mm -hmm. there's no give. I come up to L4, boom, I can take it the slack and I can spring it, okay? Your sacrotuberous ligament feels like a rock, or bone, feels like bone, but this is a ligament. It's supposed to indent just a little bit, but it does not indent, and that's because of this positioning of the sacrum, is wedging your SI joint. That's the best model we have, and it's blocking all movement. And that's a treatable condition. We're gonna treat it and restore that motion, okay? Now when you're on your stomach, your scapulae are even. Okay? And the left scapula has good inferior mobility. So, it'll be interesting to see um, what we achieve when we straighten out the pelvis in terms of the shift in the pubic joint. When you have a shift in the pubic joint, you also have a side bent sacrum. Can you capture that with the camera? Can you see that asymmetry of the inferior part of the sacrum so this one is higher up so it's the sacrum is right side bent and of course it has no mobility on either side all right let's have you lie on your back and i will show you the compensatory pattern that your body creates reflexively okay when your sacrum is stuck in the way it is the pelvis is stuck it shifts your center of mass mm -hmm. and it reflexively causes the upper cervical to be very tight. How many treatments of NUCA have you had? Lots. 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 Well, NUCA imparts a lateral force, correct? Mm -hmm. A little air hammer that pushes mm -hmm. on, the, on the outside of C1, of, of the atlas, the transverse process. Okay? But when I come and I put my fingers there, okay, specifically on that point, on the tip of the, of the transverse process of the atlas and I try and shear it to the left, there's no movement. Mm -hmm. When I try and shear it to the right, there's so, so little movement. Very little movement on either side. If I come down to C2, boom, there's free and easy movement of the whole neck. Okay? Now when I come underneath, I'm on what's called the spinous process of C2. It's, the, it's that prominent bump. I can lift it up freely. Okay, if I flex your neck slightly and then I come up above that, I'm under the spinous process of C1 and I'm trying to lift it up with a reasonable amount of force and there's no give. Hmm. I'm trying to lift your head up with a reasonable amount of force and there's no give. Now I'm on the mastoid and I'm pushing towards the floor, no movement, towards the floor on the right, no movement. So your, your muscles are so tight that your OA joint doesn't move, hmm. okay? Um, if I try and side bend your mastoid, which would also side bend your occiput, there's no movement and no movement on the left. When I try and traction your head, it's solid. There's no traction mobility in the upper neck. And that's true when I bring your head up. There's just no traction mobility in the upper cervical. And there's none here. Now this is a reflex. So you could have all the nuca in the world and it will not restore this motion, okay? I could work on this very hard. I could work very, you know, work really hard to gain motion here. It's not going to work. You can't fight Mother Nature. Mm. This is reflexively driven because of the restriction in your pelvis. When I free up the mobility in the pelvis, 
then up here is going to reflexively let go. Okay? I can't wait. <laughs> All right. So I'll demonstrate on camera the um, treatments that I'm going to do to your pelvis, and then we'll stop filming because it takes 15 minutes. Okay. Okay? I believe that to restore motion in the pelvis when you have an inferior shift at the pubic joint, it takes five minutes to move it up. Hmm. Pubic popping does not adjust the pubic joint. It just pops a tendon. Okay. And pubic popping is where you well, bend your knees. they've all done it. You've yeah, done all the physical You've therapists have done it. Bring your knees it. together yes. really tight. Yeah. Push for 10 seconds. Yeah. Then let go. Repeat it three times. Okay. Then pull your knees apart. Yeah. Pull them outward. Yeah, hold it there. Do it for 10 seconds. Repeat three times. It makes a noise because yeah. the adductor longus tendon just moves in the sheath creates a vacuum just like popping a knuckle, but it does not move your pubic bone back up. Okay. Okay? Um, so the treatment that I'm going to do to move that pubic bone upward is that I'm going to come contact the front of that bone and I'm going to hook underneath it slightly as well. I'm getting as much contact as I can and then I'm going to load it with force mm -hmm. and keep that force for five minutes. Okay? And that, based on my experience, should bring that up and balance that, and okay. maybe the sacrum will no longer be pulled into right side bending. Okay. Then, lie on your stomach, please. You'll also note that there is no lateral motion through the pelvis. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is place this two inch by four inch by eight inch foam under each ilium for five minutes. So I'm basically bringing the ilia posteromedial in the back. Each The right ilium is coming backwards like this, left ilium is coming backwards like this, sacrum is floating and maybe falling forward. Then after five minutes, I'm gonna come and isolate S1, S2, S3 of the sacrum because that's where the SI joint is on each side. And then I'm going to just push really gently and I'm going to maintain this force. It's about 15 pounds of force. And I'm going to maintain that for five minutes. Okay? And then I will also treat the ankle. Um, and I'll report on the following video what I did to the ankle if we're able to help it. So that is the treatment. This is a pattern I discovered called posterior glide fixation of the sacrum. And... Um, We'll stop filming here, I'll treat you, and then we'll film the response to treatment. And I understand all the literature on the SI joint. I understand, you know, it's very controversial whether or not you can, you know, reposition that. Um, and maybe it's just this profound increase in muscle tone throughout the pelvis. It's just rigid uh, that we're modifying the nervous system. I get that, maybe it's that. I don't know what would make the sacrum look like it's posterior, and then after treatment, what would make it look like it's now in, now forward. Um, but anyway, we're going to treat you, and we will film the response to treatment. Thank you.